Welcome. This is this is it. This is the final episode. This is the grand finale. <laughs> uh, the final episode of the first season um, of webinars uh, with John Jacob Scheer. So I'm feeling like it's a special night. John Jacob Scheer the fourth. <laughs> I'm feeling very special tonight. How about you, John, at, at the end of this journey? Very, very. I, I'm really excited about tonight. I wish we had two hours. <laughs> Who said we don't? Or two weeks. <laughs> How about that? Um, so it's a special night. It's a, it's it's um, it's the tenth episode. Um, the title of the episode is um, "Purpose, Power, and Peace," uh, or the subtitle "Process and Outcome," or "The Path and the Destination." Um, if you want to think of it that way, that's that's my um, favorite one personally. Um, and my name is Agata Chilarska, and I will be the host for for this webinar. Um, uh, the plan of the game is that John will, um, oh, we actually have a few things planned for tonight. Uh, we're going to start off with a, a, a quick overview and a journey through the, the, the 10 episodes or the previous nine episodes. And this will be, um, we thought, very helpful for those of you who were with us for those episodes to so kind of have a, a refresher run through everything we've talked about. Um, and for those of you who missed some of them, this will be a great chance to kind of be like, oh, that's cool. Um, and maybe an encouragement to go online to um, Share Leadership Center YouTube channel and then um, watch the ones you missed or the ones you loved again. Um, so um, this is the, the list of the, the episodes um, of the webinars. You'll find all of them on our YouTube sh um, channel. Just go to YouTube, put in Share Leadership Center. You'll find our channel there and all the episodes are there, including this one. This one, I think, I believe we'll probably post this one tomorrow or day after yep. tomorrow. Yep. Um, so that's the plan. Um, I'm, I'm guessing everybody in, in this meeting knows who John is. Um, just in case we have some, some new jo joiners, I, I um, want to take a second to introduce John Jacob Share the fourth. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, John is, um, um, I, I guess, um, you know, and I've, I've been asking John about how to introduce him. And I said tonight, I said, you know, this is episode number 10. People know you. This is, you know, this is our crowd. This is, I mean, but I do want to say something about you, you know, and John is a very humble man. Um, and it's sometimes hard for him to say, you know, well, I'll say this about me or say that about me. And, you know, <laughs> um, but today, um, tonight, um, um, I came up with this and he was okay with it. I came up with that. I, I wanted to say that John's uh, work uh, including his book, which we'll refer to later. John's work in his book has revolutionized personal and leadership development, which I think is quite amazing considering he's, you know, 35 years old. <laughs> so um, I feel very special and privileged to be hosting this webinar for you, John, and to be here with all our wonderful guests. Thank you. Um, yeah. And it's been a wonderful journey. Yeah, it has. I was going to say, uh, Aggie was one of the very first people I met when I came to Krakow in 2007 or 2000, somewhere in 2008. And she introduced me to all the restaurants. I was 16 back then. Yeah, she was 12 years old. No. And, uh, <laughs> and she got me the right restaurant. She really helped me like uh, live, you know, find a home here. Mm. Okay, you ready? So the plan, can I just talk about the plan a little bit? Sure. We'll, do a, we'll do a quick review of the nine episodes and then we're gonna dive right into the purpose, power and peace and talk about that. And then as usual, we'll have some time to look at um, uh, your questions and think about the application of this and all the other episodes. So that's the plan for tonight, right? Right. John? Okay, yep. over to you. Okay. Uh, I wonder if we could get people, let's see, how can I get, I'm trying to get one picture up in the upper right hand corner. How do I do? Oh, here we go. So can you all see me in the upper right hand corner? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, we can see you. We have okay. Seen. Thanks, Renata. Okay. <laughs> well, if everybody can mute and like turn their camera off for now, it'll it'll make I, I won't be nervous about, you know, I get I don't mind the content. That's joyful for me, but the technology makes me crazy. Okay. Okay, here we go. Nine, we got nine episodes. I'm gonna see if I can give you the background in 10 minutes. So one minute each roughly. So get out a timer. 
And I'm going to go one, I'm going to go right through the back nine because without those, this next one won't make much sense. So this is for people that like haven't, haven't been able to be on these before. So here we go. Episode one was about unleashing the human spirit. And the idea here is that seva is sadhana, that your seva is your work, what you do during the day. And sadhana is the, these are Sanskrit words, sadhana is your spiritual path, your practice, your spiritual practice. The whole idea here is that you can develop yourself every day, not having, you don't have to go off to do anything. It's happening during the day. You can develop yourself just like film. And the word develop comes from the old French. I love this, develope, uh, which means to unwrap, to discover, to unfold, to ripen. Like you take the film to be developed. There's, there's something on the film, but you can't see it until you get the, the right uh, liquids there. And then suddenly the image uh, comes up. That's what develop, and I think that's my contribution to leadership development. It's not about adding something to who you are on the outside, but helping you develop something from the inside out. And the, the secret is the tiger. It, I like this angi angiography, I think it's called. This is a thing when I had my heart thing a couple of years ago, run on a treadmill and they shoot this radioactive stuff and they watch where it goes. So it's a way of tracing what your body does with that uh, element, right? And that's the function of the tiger. The tiger is so great because as soon as we admit we have a tiger, we can, we can track what our system does with the tiger. Everything we need to know about ourselves shows up. I love that. Episode two, I think I'm a little bit late. What does work mean to you? What's the relationship between your life and your work? Are they friends? Are they enemies? Does one support the other? Do they compete with each other? Do they love each other? What is your relationship with work? And here's two questions. What role does work currently have in your life and how would you like it to be? It might even stay the same. And these are the five possibilities. Work is interruption, like the surfer, you know. <laughs> I'm a surfer, but work is an interruption. Work is occupation, it's how I occupy my time. It's a profession. I profess, I'm a, I'm a part of a professional group. That's my loyalty. Or it's vocation, I feel called to this work. And finally, work is mission. Like my, my life, my work it is, is the same. There's the outer game, which is what you do, but then there's the waterline. Remember, below the waterline, there's the inner game. Thank you, Tim Galway, for this. What I think, what I feel, what I want, what I hope, what I believe, and what I intend. Fabulous to have. And those two really need to be together. Episode three, self-mastery. Lao Tzu, those who know much about others may be wise, but those who understand themselves are even wiser. Those who are master over many others may be powerful, but those who are mastering themselves are more powerful still. Very fundamental to my, to my work. And then what does yourself do all day long? While life is happening outside, there's a lot happening inside. Who is the self that's experiencing all of that stuff that's happening? Could that same self be experiencing what happened? Can you turn that awareness inside and not just outside? When you're talking to yourself, which is thinking, who the heck, who's listening? Who's listening to all that crap, okay? There's a whole conversation going on in there. And here's, here's how it happens. There's somebody over here, encode some stuff. This is my thing on the three worlds. That's public, you can see it on a video. Then over here, here's, here's, here we are. We're decoding that based on our, our history. We have an interpretation. So we have three worlds. That's what's happening in the other person's world, what's happening in our world, and what's happening in the world. This is where the action is. Action is over here. Forget about changing anybody else. Forget about all that stuff. You, you know, be interested, but there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you have a hope of, as you'll see later, of doing anything about is what is what you're doing with all of that. So that's where the self-mastery comes. That's where the work is, the inner work. It's there. Okay. Barry Johnson, episode four, polarity thinking. Fabulous session. Make sure to watch it. Um, polarities are, you know. Uh, opposites that need each other, inhaling and exhaling. You can't, you can't live without these opposites. Do we have, do, with our kids, do we, do we love them unconditionally or do we help them have limits? And the answer is yes. Do we, do we have de top-down decision-making or bottom-up decision-making? The answer is yes. Do we go for change or stability? And the answer is yes. And Barry's new book is called And, which is right in the middle here. And he uses uh, inhaling and exhaling as one of those metaphors. Fabulous guy, dear friend, highly recommend you get his book and, and also watch that session. Next, the, next week we had 
uh, the four pillars, whoop, let me go back. Sorry, it was the same session. Look down here. These are President Biden's four pillars of, of the work that he says needs to be done. And look at the polarities down here at the bottom. COVID-19 embedded in each of these is a polarity. This one is individual freedom and the common good. People say, I'm not gonna wear a mask. So they're, they're, they don't understand the polarity. They've sold out on the side of, you can't tell me what to do. I don't care about the rest of you. I'm not gonna wear a mask, okay? That's a polarity. Gotta be an and there. When it comes to economic recovery, abundance for some, basics for all. Isn't that beautiful? Would it, would it be great if our, if our governments could integrate polarities? Racial equality, claiming power, sharing power, and sharing power. Climate change, focus on my country, focus on the environment for all of us. Fabulous model. Then in the next episode, we, we took a look at the internal polarity. So there's talked about you have a persona and a shadow internally, the way you want to be, the way you don't want to be. And here's mine, it's my thing here. There's an upside to being Indiana Yoda out in the world for me and other people. But there's also, but the downsides come not from being Indiana Yoda, but having to be Indiana Yoda all the freaking time. Sometimes it's not right for me or for other people. They don't need Indiana, they need something else. And I'm running around being just trying to be this marvelous special superhero. Jesus, Lord help us. What we, what we need is the upside of the shadow, but we can't go over there because the downside of the shadow is just so horrible. So this is how in our uh, intensive work, we work with the internal polarities. Episode six, meet your tiger up here at the top. What's something that confronts you? How is it costing you right now to have that tiger? What have you tried so far that hasn't worked and what might be possible if and when this situation gets resolved? Episode seven, my life script started with my somebody training, Ram Das when we're born we're automatically enrolled in a somebody training program. I love this from Ram Dass. And, and, and we have a faculty. And the faculty are all the people around us. This was mine. My grandfather, grandmother, sister Ruth, Annabelle. And, and then think about what was a familiar feeling from those first five or six years? I remember feeling loved and lonely. Right? What I figured out was always be a good boy, never be a problem for anybody. Who did I grow up wanting to be like? My grandfather. Not be like my pop, who was an alcoholic, God bless him, loved him, but tough. What difference did it make when and where I was born and spent those years? I was born September 3rd, 1940, I'm not 35, in Richmond, Virginia, which was the segregated South. I spent a lot of my time living in a mostly black neighborhood, went, rode my bike across town to go to school in a white school. So this was, this was a part of my, part of my somebody training. And what was the strategy that emerged for you? For me, it was be a good boy, always contribute, add value, sing for your supper, John. That's the only thing you can do. So what's been running you? What themes can you detect in your life script? See, I can still, I'm still singing for my supper. I'm still having that urge to, you know, be a good boy. How is that script still serving you? How is it not serving you? And who else might be in there who wants to get out, who's really you and just needs to come out, right? So yes, your life script has guided you. It has always been you. This is me with my grandfather on the Potomac River. This is me just like last year. And in between, this has always been me. That life script has always been working. My stage has always, I've, I've managed to stay in character in this script. But when you know it, you can grow it and become even more of who you are. Not change into somebody else, but ex expand who you are. Finally, episode eight, how do you edit that script? It's time to edit your script. Is it working? When does it not work? What kind of situations does it not work for you? How does it not work for others, for the other people on your stage? How is it not working for some of those other people on, on, on your stage? And what kind of people don't make it onto your stage? Or they show up, but then they wander off, or you find a way to get, or you try to force them into some role. What are the downsides for other people of, of showing up and, and being on your stage? These are fabulous, powerful questions. And do you have a sense that something is missing or there might be more to your life than what you have currently on the stage? So you need a pattern interrupt, all my gestalt training. Here you go. This is my current drama. To succeed at staying comfortable, 
as Yoda, we'll stick with Yoda, on my stage, I need to have Jedi Knights who walk in the door of the cave looking for wisdom and guidance, galactic conflict to be in the middle of, situations that require magical powers that flow from access to the force. They're not me, they come from the force. They flow through me out to be helpful in the world and upsets that allow me to calm the storm. I need a pattern interrupt, okay? What about to succeed at being uncomfortable but more alive. I need to find on my stage or locate or go out and get them, recruit them from my stage or see how they're already on my stage. Jedi Knights coming in to share their wisdom with me. Those Jedi Knights, they, they're not helpless people. They got a lot to offer. What if I become a learner in addition to being a teacher, see? Get the wisdom from out there. How about galactic beauty and love instead of a galactic war? You know, there's a lot of beauty here. Focus on that, John. Relax. Relax into the galactic, you know, love, love the mosh pit. Situations that reveal magical powers flowing from the force to me. Somebody told me once, John, get off the stage and be in the audience. Enjoy what's coming at you. Enjoy what you give everybody else. I just thought that's just fabulous. And then finally, to live at peace in the calm, in the eye of the storm. So this, these all represent ways that I can, in subtle ways, begin to flip my flip my drama and, and, and make a change. And last time, power. It was about unleashing your power. David White, The Heart Aroused. Great book. Everybody on this should read it. The ego's wish is to have power over what's happening. The soul's wish is to have power through what is happening, no matter what that may be. Power comes from uh, hit the words. This is the most powerful thing we do is we walk around naming, naming everything. You don't have power when it comes to other people. It happens in a relationship. They give it to you or they don't. They allow you to influence them because they project onto you some kind of power. Here are the seven sources of power. Position, coercion, reward, right? Connection, information, expertise, and personal. The, these three at the top are power over. These in, in the middle are power with people. And the one at the bottom is power through what's happening. It's power through whatever life throws at you, okay? And then unconscious power, the ways we rank people, whether we realize it or not, all these age, gender, and so on, all these ways that we, without even thinking about it, we, take, uh, we, we, we have positions that we put people in. And then finally, what happens when we're unaware of what we're done. This was a great story by my former wife, Catherine, called The Doe's Tale, where this young boy goes out with his bow and arrow. He totally, in, he's just trying out his new bow and arrow and he kills this doe. And, and about what happens after that. It's, fab, it's a powerful, powerful parable. <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> that was good. That was speedy, John. Mm, oh, and you I did it. I need some snaps, guys. <laughs> I was really, I got to tell you now, I was really worried. You know, I was like, okay, he's going to summarize nine episodes. I don't know. Uh, but this was, was really good. Yeah. 12 minutes. And so I hope you all have survived that. If you slow it down, <laughs> maybe it'll be meaningful to you. Okay. I was also thinking, wow, what a great, you know, summary of a large part of your work. You know, I mean, ugh. Felt like a very that, mean that, you know, somebody asked me the other day, um, what principles are at work? Mm. We could maybe talk about the 90 day program that I'm going to be starting in March, where I'm going to be teaching not just the techniques, but the, the skills, but the principles behind all that. Mm. And I think I think if you if you watch that, maybe you'll get some of that. So here we go. I years ago, you know, this this uh, leadership intensive has been going since 1987. The first one I did was with a Dutch client um, from Breda, Holland, in the Brabant of um, uh, Van Mello. They make Mentos mints, in fact. Um, and I did this solo program for this guy. And it went so well that the CEO uh, started sending his country managers from around the world. And that was the beginning of what turned into now the, now the LDI. And after about 10 years, I did some interviews with, with people that have, were graduates. And I said, what, what, what do you still have after that? Not just what you felt when it was over, but what are you aware that you, that's some kind of a benefit that has stayed with you? And these three words emerged over and over and over again. A greater sense 
of purpose, a greater feeling of a certain kind of power, like a relaxed power, not urgent, <laughs> you know, this desperate power, but a kind of relaxed power and peace, a more of a sense of rightness or calmness in life. And I thought, man, if that's what comes out of this program, then let's go, let's have at it. And I came here uh, 12 years ago to, to Poland, not to bring the LDI, but to bring this other large scale change stuff. But the LDI has, you know, took off like a rocket thanks to somebody on the call here, Gunter, Gunter Westfall, who got his whole organization to do it. So I think, as I thought about this, that these three outcomes are not only the outcome, but they're the process. They're the path and the destination. So I don't think you can, I don't think you set out to have a purpose or to have power or to have peace. I think when we do, when we effort in any of those three directions, it, 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 gets, it gets kind of strange. I think these are, I don't want to say unintended, maybe intended outcomes. They're lovely when they show up. So what I'm pointing here in this next, you know, 15, 20 minutes is what can we focus on that seems to result in a greater sense of purpose, power, and peace. And all that stuff I said before is a major part of that. So here we go. Purpose. I love this. From the old French porpoise, like I think of the porpoise, which means to put forward. Posse, posse, posse is, is, is to place or put and pour is forward. So to put something, to place something in the future, place it forward. And that it's to intend or to aim. It's the reason for doing something. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, Simon Sinek's great TED talk, uh, he calls it the why. I think it's received like, I don't know how many millions of, of views. I'm, I'm so envious. It's so great. It's such a great, it's really a great talk. So this section from Proverbs says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I went back and, you know, I'm a real word nut and I've I know the biblical language. I don't know Sanskrit, but I know Greek and Hebrew. So I went back and looked at the words. And in Hebrew, which was the original language here, the, 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 the verb to vision or the concept of vision is chazon. And it's a view of a preferred future, which is usually divinely given. It's like, this is what Yahweh wants for you in the future, right? So, to perish, fascinating. It's the word that described when a person, uh, instead of, uh, uh, you know, hair got really long. Uh, and, and so they, they, they had things that would bind, the, they, would, they would bind the hair so it wouldn't fly around when you were riding your camel or whatever, you know, fighting or making dinner or whatever you were doing. And so uh, pora in, in Hebrew means to loosen the bindings. So the hair just flies everywhere. So it's, 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 it's when you no longer can hold, hold something together. I just think that's great. When you, when you don't have a, a view of something in the future that's, that's drawing you to, to, to focus your attention, that proverb says what happens is it just, it's everything kind of comes undone, I guess would be a great way to say it. What's your purpose, all right? When you wake up in the morning, what pulls you forward into the day? Four vectors of purpose. What we, what we, uh, how we think about our purpose. This is our internal reality. There's how we are seen by others. What do other people think your purpose is? Um, people have told me because I'm sometimes out of touch with my own purpose. I just love what I do so much. I never think about it. It's almost become a habit. And some of my good friends say, John, you're the only guy on the planet who doesn't know what your purpose is. Anybody's with you for five minutes figures it out, right? And then what do you actually do? If somebody followed you around and just watched you, what would, they, what would they guess your purpose is based on your behavior? I think that's a really great one. Whoa. And then there's the not so noble reasons that you do what you do. What, what, are, what is your latent, your latent reality or purpose? Now, if you remember your physics, you have vector analysis. You can add all these vectors up and you can figure out why you have the impact or don't have the impact that you want in the world. Okay. If you're unconscious, unclear, or have an incongruent purpose, if these aren't in alignment, let's say this is what you think you do, this is what other people think you do, and this is what you actually do, and this is 
you know, the latent, some of the uh, not so clear reasons, then this is the resultant force. If you're conscious, clear, and congruent, then what you, what you think you do, what other people think you do, what you say you do, and, and what the latent purpose, of, then you have more, more, uh, more power or force in the world, is what I would say. Now, what would you set out to do or what would you set out to be if you knew you wouldn't fail? I love that question. It's a classic question. Imagine zero fear, zero hesitation. Can you imagine that? If not, keep at it, all right? It's not mind over matter. So my good friend, Ted, Ted Buffington. It's not mind over matter. It's the other way around. It's what matters so much that you wouldn't mind doing the difficult or the impossible. Like the grandmother that lifts the truck off of her, off of her grandchild or, the, you know, the, that, or my story about the phantom, you know, me the stutterer on, as an air controller trying to rescue those two guys in the water. What is it that, that pulls you, that calls you out? You need to have a purpose that works for you, a purpose that works in you, and a purpose that works through you. Being on a path that nurtures your soul, contributes to the people around you, is in alignment with what life needs, is knowing why you're here, allowing the gifts at the heart of who you are that yearn to be expressed to come out in whatever work you're doing. And this is finally the stonemason. You know that story, what are you doing? One of them says, I'm chipping stone. The other one says, I'm feeding my family. And the other says, I'm building a cathedral. And for many years, I thought the only right answer is I'm building a cathedral. But boy, I'll tell you, here's, let me tell you what the right answer is. <laughs> Any one of those three. I've met people that just love to chip stone. You know, I was in factories, Polaroid. These women love sitting there at that assembly line making these cameras as they came down, blew my mind. They were just as happy as they could be. I mean, really, they loved it. They wouldn't change jobs. Power, okay, poteri, posse, from the Anglo-Norman came to poer, and finally power in English, the ability to act or do or make something happen. This is our number one power, naming everything. It's what we do. Everything that is and everything that happens, because words are the most powerful force available to us. It's what we do. We walk around naming everything, building, creating the world with our language, without what we think we're seeing. But when it comes to other people, remember this, the three worlds, this is, a, this is where the action is. Well, the power that we need to have through what's happening comes, comes here. What's this? Yeah, there we go. Remember these, compliance, commitment, power through. So you got three folders in life, things I can control, things I cannot control, and things I might be able to influence. We get in big trouble when we put things in the wrong folder. How many, you, you can't lose weight, by the way. People, I say, where would you put that? And well, I can lose weight. Okay, ready? One, two, three, lose weight. You can't do it. <laughs> you can exercise, you can change what you eat, but you can't lose weight. Lose weight is the result of something, just like purpose, power, and peace, I believe. You can't control those into existence, right? But what we can control, what we say, what we do, and what we intend, that's it, those three. Most powerful is what we intend. Things we cannot control is anything outside of ourselves, like for instance, other people. And what we might be able to influence is pretty much everything else to some extent, we have some influence, all right? So here's a freebie, not, it's not in the flow, but I had to say it when it came to me the other night. Things can be managed or even controlled, but not people. People can be led or influenced, but not managed or controlled. You wanna manage somebody? Manage yourself. And I wanna say manage your freaking self. That's the only person you have a chance of managing. So work on that, okay? <clears throat> All right, purpose, power, peace. Here we go. The Greek, Irene, Irene, anybody named Irene means peaceful. It means in the Greek, joined, tied together into a whole, brought together. In Latin, pace, truce, favor, grace. Old French, pay, reconciliation, silence, agreement, the absence of war. But the original one, which I really like from the Hebrew, shalom, you heard that, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, meaning having what you need, abundance, welfare, tranquility. There's a kind of a wholeness quality 
to shalom, which is what I think of peace, not just the absence of something. Okay, here we go again. You remember, this is where the action is over here. Your intention is where you have your self mastery and control. This is something you can control. This is where this is where purpose, power, and peace happen. It happens here, where you do not see the world in terms of your history, but you're able to actually exercise conscious choice and intend and decode something else. You can actually change the way you see things. Wayne Dyer has that lovely saying, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I can't tell you how many people have come back from their intensive with us and on our phone calls afterward, which we always have, they'll say, you know, a weird thing happened while I was off at the intensive, people back home changed. I just think that's so great. That's, sign of, that's a sign of success. Five signs of being at peace, fully present, alive, often joyful, energized and sustained by some sense of the rightness of where you are, where you're, what, what you're up to, and yet relaxed, calm, and not attached like, like when I'm developing facilitators for our intensives, which have takes a lot of skill. I mean, it's not just something you can read a workbook and go do. The facilitators need to be not attached to specific outcomes. Can you be with people exactly the way they are without, without blame? You're not there to fix people or help even to help people. Well, can you do that? It starts with yourself. Can you be with yourself? Can you be non-attached to specific outcomes? physically, emotionally balanced, grounded, deeply appreciative of what is happening. The verb to appreciate means to see. It doesn't mean to be, it doesn't mean to give positive feedback. If you look it up, you, when you appreciate something, you're letting it in, you're letting it in. So can you let yourself in and can you let what's happening around you just come in? Can you just be with it the way it is? And I think peace, is where it comes from. People who face their tigers, applying what they learn, often report a sense of rightness, even things that used to be full of conflict. When you engage with life using purposeful power, not like that kind of purpose, a relaxed flow that flows from the inner place where the highest and best of who you are when peace is a natural result. All right, this is the last question I have for you. That's it, purpose, power, and peace. And I'd like you to think about, if you've been in other webinars here or even this one, what is a simple yet profound action? Linnea, I got this one from that, um, from, the, from, the, from the podium of, of, of world religions that we went to in Spain all those years ago. What is a simple yet profound action that you, will take in response to this webinar series. Three suggestions. It helps if you make it specific. Something that would show up in your calendar or on a video. Something public, if you, if you tell somebody, these three things raise the chances that you'll actually do it. Like when I ran my first marathon, I, I told some friends I'm gonna run this marathon. I, I painted myself into a corner. And then make it a plus one stretch, not a plus 10. I'm not gonna lose 20 pounds, can you lose one pound? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm off and running, all right? So we're gonna come back to something. If you wanna talk about that now in our time left, that's fine. But I wanna, just before we go there, I just wanna let you know uh, about this. The book is published now in two formats. Uh, here, there's an interactive version, which has videos and audios and exercises. It, it's, a, it's a PDF version, so you, you know, with, with, with links in it. And then there's the, then there's the Kindle version over here, just the book, very powerful, but just the book. And then the LDI that we do, the Leadership Intensive, which is where all this stuff came from, there, there are two coming up. I'm doing one in March uh, with, uh, with Pauline, who's on the, on the call here. She's in Glasgow, Scotland. Carol is in Krakow, and I'm in Warsaw, so it's going to be kind of an international team. And there's one coming up very soon, facilitated by Shemek Gavronsky and Anya Bronyak, a couple of really, really close colleagues. And then uh, more coming to you probably, I think we have your email address, but starting in March, the middle of March, I'm gonna be starting with Dorota Navalanyets, a 90 day uh, deep dive 
uh, basically it's going to be deeper than the LDI. It's, 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 it's really is a kind of a spiritual development uh, experience. I've been hesitant to say that in a really powerful Catholic country because people think it has to do with church. It's not about church. It's, it's, it's about something else. So, so whew, over to you, Aggie. I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> Thank wow. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm thinking um, um, we want to open this floor up to all the participants and we're happy to, um, uh, three things are coming up to me. One, any questions you have on purpose, power and peace? That would be a great time to ask those. Uh, two, uh, and we can you know, take those uh, at stages. Two, um, if you wanna share any, um, any, anything that you want to do, um, you know, which is uh, a small plus one stretch towards applying these, anything you, you took out of these webinars into your life, uh, that would be great. Maybe you have already, maybe there is something that you have done uh, and you feel okay sharing it with the group. That would be fantastic. Um, and then I guess, you know, towards the end, I'd love to take a poll, but we'll wait with that towards the end of the, of the meeting. So um, any questions now, if you wanna, um, we'll actually enable you to speak and raise your question and, and have you talk, but if you can raise your hand, then I'll, you know, we're gonna make sure that you don't all talk at the same time. Um, so I raise your hand and then I, you know, um, uh, I'll point to you and we'll be able to, uh, to have a conversation or have John answer any questions you might have. Hey, John Beck. Hey, uh, thank you, John. Um, you may have said this, um, but I'd love to just hear your short version of as you've had powerful transformation, have there been consistent markers around the kinds of experiences that have facilitated it? You mean, can I see any, if I understand your question, are there any uh, familiar things that happen on the way to transformation? Is that kind of the, the, the gist of it? Or markers meaning, like, how do I know that I'm on the path of transformation or something? Milestones or? I, I'm, I'm actually more looking at pattern recognition. Well, I know three things that have always been a part of transformation. I'm not sure this will, this will respond to you, but uh, pain, um, and pain possibility, pain is the, almost always the trigger for transformation. Very few people wake up in the morning and go, ah, I just feel so great. I think I'm going to just, you know, set out for some, you know, transformation. Uh, something isn't yeah. working. There's, there's some kind of <laughs> breakdown. And my friend Jesse Watson taught me this. If you have a car that's been sitting in your garage for five years and it has a bunch of flat tires, it's not a breakdown. <laughs> It's only a breakdown if you've been going somewhere. So the beauty about a breakdown is it reveals that it reveals that you were headed. You you were you were trying to go somewhere. So when I'm working with clients, you know, in the in the in the business world, and they have breakdowns, I go, great, this is revealing a, some you know some some force for going somewhere. But the pain is not enough. My pop was an alcoholic. He knew it wasn't working. He knew it was a breakdown, but he couldn't get the second thing. I think pain is the father of transformation. Possibility is the mother. You can't, you have to walk through the door. Pain gets you to the door, right up to the transom. But if you can't see something, if you can't get that vision, see, Pop could never imagine himself. He was always Jack Scherer, who right now might not be drinking, but really underneath mm -hmm. it all, I'm an alcoholic. So he never could see the possibility of having that be behind him. And I love what Dorota Navalanya said when we were writing the book about this. She said, and the mother who whispers, mm. whispers the possibility into wow. the ear, which means that you need to be almost childlike at that moment. Pain, you can, pain you can feel. And at that moment, you, you gotta listen to the mother whispering, you mean it's gonna be over there. And then, and then this is when it really gets hairy. The next thing, the birth canal. So mom and dad get together. The, the birth <laughs> canal is chaos. This analogy is getting scarier in many minutes. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's a quarter to nine, okay. You can hang mm -hmm. on for another 15 minutes. You can't get there without chaos. If you can get there without chaos, then it's not transformation. Mm -hmm. 
I love that. The implication of that is that there really need to be a variety of both awarenesses and skill sets. Absolutely. Because and I know people, but, but, but John, I know people that have all the awareness and skill sets who can't get there because mm -hmm. they have to let go. You have to let go mm -hmm. into the chaos. You have to be willing to, you have to be willing to not know. Mm -hmm. And for executives and consultants and smart people, boy, that is, that's, that's, that's what stops them. Yeah. Mm. And for good boys. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm in that club. Mm, thank thanks, you john i love that analogy with the father and the mother of oh, transformation it's beautiful mm. i love derota's contribution that the mother mm. whispers, mm -hmm. whispers the yeah i got the box right now thinking about it i'm thinking about the trust that you need to put in the mother you know and to trust that something will unfold and that this will you know this will happen See, um, we get called in to do, you know, change projects with organizations. I know, Martin, you, you guys are in that business. And, and quite often, they really don't want transformation because uh, what kind of executive can go to the, their, their supervisor, their shareholders and say, by the way, there's going to be a period here where we're not going to go what the bleep we're doing. OK, but that we have to go through that. And, you know, no, 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 no. So we end up with incremental change. And that's and that's why we are in the world we're in. Yeah. We're afraid to break the pattern. So Annette says that, you know, in the chat, Annette says that it sounds like there's also a role for the midwife. I totally agree with oh, that. <laughs> that is how, that's, that's what, that's, that's, a, how that's the work that we do, I think, right? We're the midwife, right? In organizations. We train our change facilitators. Yep. Yeah. In the LDI, we don't, we don't deliver the baby. Oh, my daughter, by the way, Emma, I don't know if Emma's on here or not. I couldn't see. But when she was born, the midwife didn't show up in time. It's, it's, it's a long story. And so actually I didn't deliver the baby. Catherine delivered the baby, right? Catherine delivered Emma, but I caught Emma and I cut the cord and did all that stuff. And so, uh, you know, I've kind of been there <laughs> and I realized that I was a midwife. I, I, I felt, I remember sitting there in the room, all women, Kath had been calling some of her women friends who had been moms to come over because the midwife didn't know where we were and it's a long story. And I was the only man in the room when my daughter was born. There was four, and I remember feeling like, thousands of years ago in a cave, million maybe, <laughs> you know, with all the women. And I had been allowed to stay in the cave for this miraculous experience. <laughs> anyway. Thank you, Annette. I think it's a great analogy. I think, I think that's what I'm going to put in on my LinkedIn profile now. I never knew what the title of my job is. You know, the midwife of transformation. I think that's that. Well, after, after, I, after I helped with Emma's birth, I created, somebody told me, one of my assistants on the team said, you need to create a new business card. So I said, John, John Shear, OD consultant and, and midwife. <laughs> OBG. Right. And Aggie, um, to continue, continue with your metaphor, this is that you're going to put it on LinkedIn. When John does change this change uh, initiatives in a corporation, you need the change champions inside they're the doulas and oh. you need doula <laughs> to massage yeah. and, and Beautiful. Trust yeah. the midwife yeah. you yes. know when i look at every success yes. when i look at every successful major change process that i've been a part of i think won't say it was actually uh I would say the tipping point what made it successful was there was a champion inside the company who sponsored me sponsored my team provided top cover, you know what I'm saying? They were high enough in the organization to say, you leave these guys alone, you know, I'm, I'm supporting them, uh, that kind of thing. God bless them. Now, step, uh, next, that's next in Polish. <laughs> um, we have a comment in the chat, in the chat from Jeff. Uh, sounds like purpose, power, and peace are emergent properties of our being. Mm. Hmm. And that is emerge and that this emergent being arrives as a consequence of our right doing. The right doing is the path you facilitate and clients being is the destination. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Jeff. <laughs> I know, I know, I know a couple of Jeffs. I don't know which one you are, but uh, what a fabulous question. Uh, this is very Zen. You know, I'm, I'm actually mm -hmm. a Zen Lutheran. I tell people I'm kind of a Zen Lutheran. Uh, that you know, there's the eightfold path and so on. That uh, that peace, purpose, and peace are emergent properties of our being. 
Yeah, I don't think they are caused. This, this is a, I mean, I haven't thought about this deeply enough yet to make any kind of a pronouncement, but my, my intuition is, like I was suggesting at the beginning, that they are the path. And once on the path, we have these little glimpses or, or we're, we're given these little uh, moments of purpose, power, and peace. And that when our doing, that was the, the slide where I had what I'm doing and underneath it, you know, below the waterline, my hopes, my fears, and so on. The root for that word is, is doing is above the waterline and being is below the waterline, but they're so abstract that uh, people don't seem to get it. So I put down what I'm hoping, what I'm fearing, and so on. I would love to hear you comment about that, Jeff. This is a really fabulous point if you feel, if you, feel you know, moved. or not <laughs> or anybody well, else actually well john uh thanks for the feedback <laughs> yeah um yeah i i'm associated with a, a group of coaches internationally called being at full potential oh and, fabulous and that's the work that we do in organizations is help them to to uh develop their their being Along the lines of the action logics of Bill Torbert, we have an assessment that we, we bring to the table that helps to identify these different levels of consciousness. And uh, Well, you sound Canadian. Where do you do this? Vancouver. Um, ah, well, Vancouver. Linsko, yeah. one of our colleagues, is right there. Yeah. I just want to say I've really enjoyed your presentation. This is the first one I've attended, um, and Great. it was a dynamite um, summary of, of the previous nine. I'm, I'm fully intending on going and, and looking at those and, and the book and I'll, I'll, I'll check into the LDI and see Badly. if that's for me. Yeah. Badly. Thanks very much for, for well, make sure, make sure to get in touch with Skognitsky because she's right there in your neighborhood and she from time to time offers LDI. So you wouldn't have to travel all the way around the world. You could do one right there at home. Oh, maybe you could put her email in the uh, chat or something like that. Hey Jeff, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat and we can connect with each other. Terrific, thank you. And there's also Sabrina. Um, yeah. Yep. Like mother, like daughter. Mm. Yes, and Sabrina has just recently migrated back to Vancouver from Halifax. Guess who's happy? <laughs> <laughs> can only imagine. That's um, wonderful. So we have we have a, a question from Mike. Um, John, can you make some comments about the role of imagination in the three P's? Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I hope you all understand this, uh, but in the 90 day program, I'm not gonna be afraid to talk like this, but there are moments when I know that I'm channeling. Mm. Um, some of you are nodding your head. So you know what I'm talking about. It's It's, I'm not thinking about something. I remember I, when I was a pastor, right, in, in the church, we had an early service at 8.30 and a, a, another service at 11 or something like that. And I was just invited to, to preach occasionally, which I just love. And the pastor, who was a really good friend of mine, the senior pastor there, at, one day after church was over, he said, how do you do that? I said, what? He said, well, it's this kind of the same sermon but it's different and it, it's the same sermon, but it's different. How do you remember what to say? And I said, well, Dick, I'm not remembering what to say. I'm listening for what to say. Mm -hmm. And I, I think some of you know, may understand what I'm saying there. And, and I either it was a gift or I don't know, growing up in an alcoholic family where I had to pretty much discover my own world or something like that. But I, I channel the book the book facing the tiger you can ask dorota we would we, we spent four hours every morning on zoom for four months she was in Wrocław and i was writing you know putting this into words and there was sometimes when we would record it because it was coming it was flowing so fast i think that's what imagination is imagination is when you put in the clutch you know and you disconnect <laughs> From the engine and 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 it you know and the and the flywheel just runs and I'm and I'm actually listening mm. and I can't talk I I can't talk fast enough like Spock you know I wish that Spock could do one of those Vulcan mind sucks or whatever it was. Mm. 
So imagination. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that is, I think that's where imagination comes from. Mm. That access or? Well, the thing is, I don't know that you can, I, I can't make it happen. Uh, mm. But I can relax. I mean, that's what mindfulness is. I mean, when I do my little bowl and my little routine that I do up to take a few breaths, I can, I can, it, I can up the chances mm. that I'm not imposing my thinking on what's coming out, but more like waiting and listening. Mm. Um, and I think, and I think it is a, almost like a skill or, or a muscle that can be strengthened. Yeah. I, did, I, I mean, I did these slides. I did these slides like two or three days ago, and then I looked at them again, looked at them again. And mm -hmm. then I remember when, when I was a pastor, uh, sometimes a sermon would come out completely different because I was channeling. I'd step up into the pulpit and something would hit me and I would, I'd go off on it. And so I said stuff here uh, with you guys that didn't come to me during my preparation. I was like, you know, it just came to me to say. So I trusted completely, by the way. As a Gestalt mm -hmm. therapist, I mean, when, when a thought came to me once or twice after a while, it didn't even have to come more than once. I, I just, you know, offered it. John, do we have time for one more? Yeah, we'll do one more. I have a, a question from Diane here. Um, and asking about the key to being able to let go of the outcome. Whoa. <laughs> oh, boy. That's a big one. And you have about 90 seconds. Yeah. Well. <laughs> But you've done so well in this webinar. I know you're going to, you know. Well, there's holding on, there's letting go and moving on, right? That's, that's the process. And so I, as, as an old Gestalt therapist, rather than focusing on helping you let go, I would exaggerate the holding on. I would say, okay, hold on to it even more. No, tighter. No, no, no. What is it? What is it? <laughs> hold on to? Okay. Think of all the reasons why you absolutely cannot let it go. See? Mm. And after about five minutes of that, you get freaking tired of it. And you, oh. Mm. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the paradoxical theory of change that I love so much about, about my Gestalt training. Mm. Yeah, so I would say don't focus on letting go because that's <laughs> just gonna, it's, you know, it's like Aikido. Mm. You know, if, you, if you push against something, you give it power. So I'd rather, I'd rather do something opposite. Oh, I love that. Thank you, that's so insightful. Well, listen, uh, we, we swore, didn't we, Aggie, that we were going to get people, that we weren't going to have people be even, even, um, even one minute over. Oh, I didn't swear that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but there's, there's one other thing that I, I actually, a request that I have for everyone who can still hang on for, you know, another three or four minutes, um, because it's now been 10 episodes. If you could please all, John, could you display that slide again with all 10 or, or previous nine episodes listed? Yeah, um, can you each take a minute and just type in the chat box, what, which of the episodes kind of stood out for you, mm -hmm. which was a special one for you? Yeah. Uh, you know, if you could just give us a one sentence feedback, like, oh, this one was my favorite because it did this or that to me, or this and that, I liked especially, you know, is there, is, that will be helpful feedback for us and interesting information and also a way for you to kind of go back to that experience and maybe a recommendation for others to go on yeah. YouTube and watch some of these. Are you seeing it? No, we're not. Okay. I need to go here and, oh, you have to share, right? Mm -hmm. That's well, I'm helpful. A, I'm a sharer. I should be able to do that. Um, thank you, Mike. So the Barry Johnson one, mm, great. You know, this will also help us um, to um, figure out uh, a way for the next, we don't know, honestly, we don't know what the next um, season is yet, whether it's, you know, a webinar or some other kind way of staying connected and present and, and sharing. Um, we're not sure what that's going to be yet, um, but there is going to be season two. Um, so if you let us know which of these, oh, there we go. Thank you. We can see those now. Which of these have especially touched you or, you know, you enjoyed or liked or stand out, stood out for you? That would be very helpful. Oh, God, that's a lot. Thank you, guys. Oh, wonderful. Mm. You Great. know, there seems to be, uh, Aggie, I've yeah, got like 30 seconds. Um, it might be a, not a webinar, but a, what do you call it? Um, podcast. A podcast or something. Mm -hmm. I, 
I don't know what the difference is. I think you're supposed to be selling <laughs> something in a webinar and a podcast. You're just, I just want to talk to you guys about whatever you want to talk about. Um, mm. you know, I, I'd like to talk with whoever, whoever wants to participate in the, some kind of conversation. So we're kind of searching uh, for what the right quantity is. It once a week. And one of my staff wants me to do something every day. And I'm going, uh, that's a lot of John. I'm not sure, you know, I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> I wouldn't want to make anybody do that. But anyway, so we'll get back to you. We have your emails now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you'll be hearing from us. And if you're interested in that 90 day program, it's going to be online and it'll be uh, at a time of day, which will work for the West Coast in uh, in the States as well as in Europe. It'll be in the late afternoon or the early evening. So so it'll be like in three hour chunks, you know, like that. If you if you want to do it, you can send us an email and we'll send you info about it. Mm -hmm. I've never done this in a long time. This is going to be a kind of a deep, like a spiritual development thing where it's not going to be teaching. The, the, like the LDI has a lot of content in order to give you something to think about. But in, the 90, in this program, Purpose, Power, and Peace, the content's going to come from you. It's going to come up, up from here. And, mm. and it'll be, a, it'll be a, a different kind of experience. Mm. Well, thank you all. Even if, you know, if I never see any of you again, uh, it's been it's it's been great being with you, and this COVID thing is absolutely amazing. Look what it has made for me, at least. Look what it's made possible. So uh, I'm just grateful. I may never get on an airplane again. <laughs> I doubt that, but it might be a while. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, I I actually um, Jeff has requested to put the YouTube. Um, a channel in the chat box. I'll do that right now. Or Magda, if you can do that for us, that would be fantastic. Um, Magda uh, from SLC is with us. So if you can include the YouTube channel link into the chat, that would be great. That would actually be very helpful. Um, thank you everybody for um, being with us. Thank you for this feedback and thank you for um, all the information you've now put in the chat. That's very, very helpful. Uh, have a great night um, or day <laughs> and stay connected. Thank you.